Okay, so we got two stepdad horror stories animated. Um, this is from MJV Animations. So, yeah, let's get into it, guys. Okay, so we got two stepdad horror stories animated from MJV Animations. Royal Diamond 2 Oil. Let's get into it, guys. Y'all already know. I don't think I ever talked about this to anyone, as it is the most terrifying incident of my life. I was in middle school when my dad died in an accident. My mom and I shifted to a new town. She took a job at the local school, and I got admitted there too. So the new boy and the son of a teacher. You can probably imagine how my first day went. A big tall guy, who was the bully, pushed me and I tripped over the dumpster. Oh, Someone's leftover smelly hot dog smacked me on the face. Ugh. The mustard that came out of it looked like poop on my face. I'd be so mad that hot dog get grease all over my clothes and it's gonna be hard to get out because it is stained. Oh man. Anyways, I got home. I didn't say anything to my mom and went to bed. The next few days went by and I was still the lonely, unwanted kid in school. One day at recess, I was walking to the school cafeteria when I heard a familiar laugh. I followed it and stopped outside of a classroom. My mom was standing near a desk and talking to a man wearing a bow tie. Who the frack wears a bow tie? Why his eyes so dark? Yeah, well, we're just adjusting well. I think it's a little tough for Liam. Why? Is he all right? I don't know. He, he doesn't talk much. Well, I can talk to him if you want. No. And that's how Gerald... Uh-uh. Why they hold her hands already? She don't know him. ...came into our life. After three months of this conversation, Mom got married to him. He was the school accountant, and they both kind Wait. of fell in love and had... After three months, she got married to him? No way. ...had their perfect marriage. She don't know him. Gerald was not a bad guy. I mean, at first. I just couldn't hate him. After they got married, Gerald moved into our house. He tried hard to impress me. He would make breakfast, take us out to dinner every Friday night. He looked he like he was me looking good, though. Y'all see that food? Hold up, let, um, we gotta rewind that real quick. He tried hard to impress me. He would make breakfast, take us out to dinner every Friday night. Oh, look at Even that. That was good, wasn't it? That looked good. I keep missing it. I'm trying to pause it, but anyways. That's me my favorite gaming console on my birthday. One day, I was taking books from my locker to attend the next class when I felt a strong slap at the back of my head. Turning back, I saw Monte standing behind me with his evil sidekicks. Look they who's are. famous now. Monty, dude, I don't want any trouble. I right, leave me alone. Or what? Your stepdad's gonna kick my ass? Let me go. You do know that your mom is screwing the school accountant, right? Everyone laughed as he made jokes about my family. Wow. I got really angry and shouted, Keep my family out of this, okay? Whoa! Big talks all of a sudden. I hate Sa when they be like, Whoa, ho, 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 don't, don't big talk. Y'all deserve it. Shut up. Y'all could do all that talking, but he can't. In this, he punched me in the face and hey. gave me a black eye. Wow. I lied to my mom, saying I got elbowed in basketball practice. I wow. planned to avoid Monty like a plague from the next day, but fate has something shocking planned. <laughs> Upon reaching school, we were all informed about the untimely demise of Monty Clement. He was returning home from school and got brutally murdered by some psycho. 
His body was found floating at the big lake in the woods. His hands and legs were tied, and he was thrown into the lake. What? Not being able to swim, he drowned. As if the death wasn't painful enough, the killer pulled his nails and teeth out. Yeah. His parents were devastated, and everyone was shocked. Cops started oh. investigating this gruesome murder, and a night curfew took place in the town. No what? I'm trying to think. Was Monty bullying somebody else to cause that, though? Shoot, you, you, you never know, because he had a mouth on him. He thought he was Mr. Big Man, you know? It was supposed to wander alone in the streets after school. I was sitting on my room in a rainy Sunday afternoon when Gerald came in. Hey, uh, are you all right? I guess so. He sat beside me on the bed and said, Were you and Monty close? Um, not exactly. I see. We used to have complaints about him being a bully at school. Did he ever hurt you? I didn't want to say anything about to somebody who just died, so I lied. No. I would have been like, he gave me a black eye. He slapped me in the back of the head. I would have told everything. I don't care, bro. Like, dead or not. Like, if I'm... Um, if somebody was that mean and just ruthless, I mean, what they going to do? Rise back up from the dead? Nah, bruh. He gave me a black eye. He slapped me in the back of the head. He insulted me. Uh, never. I see. Did the cops find who did this? Not yet. Gerald got up and started walking to the door. What if it's him? He suddenly stopped and turned around. His eyes were glowing wide. A what the heck? What if he's the one? A sick smile appeared on his face. Oh, You're safe now, Liam. And then left. A cold shiver ran down my spine. What the heck? Why did he say that? From the next day on, I started keeping a close eye on Gerald. He had a habit of working in the basement till midnight. After having dinner that night, I remained awake in my bed, waiting for Gerald to go to sleep. As soon as the clock struck midnight, I heard the basement door close. Footsteps started to come upstairs and then stopped right outside my door. It was open and my room was quite dark. The dim light wow. coming from the hallway created a shadowy atmosphere. This game you're not ready for I looked at the open door and saw Gerald standing outside his eyes were scanning my room he didn't notice that I was awake and thank God for that after watching me sleep for almost a minute straight he slowly that? turned around and went to his bedroom the moment I heard the bedroom door close I slowly got up from my bed carefully walked downstairs without making a single noise. The house was pin drop silent, and only the sound of the grandfather clock was echoing in the void. I twisted the basement door. He never locked this door. This much I knew. Coming down, I turned on the light and found myself standing in a not so mysterious place. There was a wooden table. It looked all dusty, dark, gloomy, scary, no light. Dang. The chair. He turned on a light bulb. Piles of files and documents were on the desk. A worn out couch and a small television were also in the basement. Nothing suspicious or alarming here, I thought to myself. Suddenly, my eyes went to the small mini freezer where Gerald stored his beers. I don't know why I opened oh, it, okay. but as I did, the ground beneath my feet swept away. Along with the beer cans, hold up, hold up, mom hold was up, already asleep. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Hold on. All right. 
Piles of files and documents were on the desk. A worn-out couch and a small television were also in the basement. Nothing suspicious or alarming here, I thought to myself. Suddenly, my eyes went to the small mini-freezer where Gerald stored his beers. I don't know why I opened it, but as I did, the ground beneath my feet swept away. Uh. Along with the beer cans, there was a jar. Teeth and fingernails? Uh, that's uh, the description of the buoy. Filled with pungent smelling colorless liquid. And in that solution, handfuls of teeth and fingernails were floating. The ripped out nails still had fleshy residue stuck to them. Why are you up so late, Liam? Ooh. I turned back in fear and saw Gerald standing behind me. His face had a blank expression, and his eyes Why were they gotta blinking. Make him look like that, though? He asked me again, Why are you up so late, Liam? His teeth so cricket and close together, y'all. Man, I can't, I can't. I could feel my heartbeat getting faster. I started to fumble. Y you, you killed Monty? Why would he say that? <laughs> Why? Why did you... Because he hurt you. I'm your dad. And it's my job to protect you. I screamed. Mom! Stop it. Liam! Stop shouting. You'll wake the neighbors. You... You're a murderer! Gerald pressed his hand on my mouth and then kissed me on the forehead. His saliva dripped over my nose. Yeah. And then looked me Ew. in the eye and whispered. Ugh, why would he just kiss him and slob on him? That's nasty. Daddy's going to take care of you. Ooh, just he's... let him, Liam. He, I ain't gonna lie. He sound like a scary rapist on top of that. A murderer, killer, rapist. Come on now. Uh-uh. Like, he, he may do something to Liam. Uh-uh. I don't trust him, man. I couldn't make a sound. My voice died in my throat. I only cried. Just then, I heard my mom's voice calling out. Gerald? Liam? What are you guys doing down there? Um, nothing, honey. Just having a chat. He let go of me, and I wiped my face with my sleeve. My mom came down and looked at us. Did you scare him, Gerald? No, no, honey. I was just explaining to Liam about the teeth and nails. Oh my god, Liam, are you okay? I looked down and saw that I had peed my Aww. pants in fear. My mom came close to me and kissed my cheek, saying, You don't need to be afraid of him. He just wants to help out. Why is he looking what? like that? Help out with what? He married this ugly dude. I saw Monty bullying you at school. He had it coming. Trust me. It His mom evil too? What the heck? Felt so good when we tied him up near the lake and pulled his teeth and nails out. We threw his body into the water and watched him drown in the lake. I'm not gonna let anyone hurt you. <laughs> I guess that oh. makes us a twisted family, but who cares? No, I will be up out of there. I'm packing myself, I'm running away. I still live Crazy. with my parents. Me my mom and my dad, Gerald. We had pledged to protect each other for the rest of our lives. I know that they are twisted, but I can't leave them. Wow. They are all I have. And for Gerald, it it. I've already lost a father who once cared. I can't lose him now. The remains of Monty are still in our basement freezer. Mom and dad kept it as a memento. And to think... I also started to grow fond of their weirdness. After all, the fruit uh -oh. doesn't fall. No, he's weird. What the heck? All far from the tree. Wake up to the new $5 Bell breakfast box. Only at Taco Bell. When it all started, 
I actually liked my stepdad, the second Ryan. Story. He and my mom met at some work event, and I could tell right away that he was good for her. Mom hadn't really laughed or smiled much in the 18 months after dad passed away. Ryan gave something back to her, it's some like spark or light evil. or presence. He made her happy, and that made me happy, so I was willing to overlook the weirdness when it first began. Ryan was a giant, at least six foot six or like more. A giant. I was always surprised his shoulders could even fit through the doorway. He had a dark beard and a booming laugh that he fired off often. But something felt strange from our first meeting. It was his eyes. I decided later. They were small for his face, nearly black. And over the course of the dinner that mom made for the three of us, I don't remember seeing Ryan blink once. The first six months after okay. my stepdad moved in with us were pretty great. He and my mom had a date at least once a week. Ryan even made time to hang out with me, which I respected. Not every new relationship is going to leave time for somebody to try to teach you how to drive or help you with calculus homework, but the guy made an effort. Okay. I was stressed enough getting ready to go into my senior year of high school. Knowing that my mom had somebody who made her happy after dad died was a relief in a lot of ways. I noticed early on though, that certain oddities seemed to hover around my stepfather. Strangers watched him from Right, what's that about? That that that's creepy. Time to time. Anytime I was out in public with him, I saw people looking at us. I could tell it was more than a casual reaction to Ryan's size. It felt familiar. Protective. Eyes followed us in restaurants and parks and stores. I wonder if he like hypnotizes people or something. Like his presence just hypnotizes people. My mom seemed oblivious, but that's love for you, I guess. She and Ryan were dreamy-eyed for each other, and sometimes I felt like a third teenage wheel. But honestly, the first couple of months were good for all of us. Then Ryan moved in, and things got weird. My stepdad got a lot of letters and packages. Always, every time when they move in, it always gets weirder because they live in with you now. Before they didn't live with you, so you ain't see all the all the true colors, you know. He would wake up before the rest of us and go wait at the mailbox some mornings. But I still saw just how much correspondence came in. No matter the weather, even in the rain, Ryan would be waiting for the mailman. I tried once or twice to intercept the letters, but I never made it to the mailbox on time. Once Ryan had the boxes or envelopes, they disappeared to a shed that he custom built on our property. It stayed locked at all times, and he told my mom and me very clearly that it was his private space. In addition to all the mail, Ryan got a ton of calls at all hours. Uh, no. I'd step out of my bedroom in the middle of the night to use the bathroom and hear him whispering downstairs, having a conversation in the kitchen. Occasionally, I'd creep down the hallway, hoping to catch a few words, but my stepfather seemed to have an almost supernatural sense about eavesdropping. Once, I made it most of the way down the staircase before his voice suddenly stopped mid-sentence. I attempted to tiptoe back into my room, but when I reached the top of the stairs, I looked back to see Ryan staring up at me. His face was completely blank in the dim light, which was somehow worse than if he had been angry. I stopped trying to listen in on his late night calls after that. If it was just the letters and the phone calls, I could have let a sleeping dog lie. Even a year in, my mom was still over the moon, head over heels, madly in love with this strange giant man. But then, the long disappearances began. Long Ryan disappearance. told us that these were business trips. Long disappearances? Oh. Though he was always cagey about exactly what he did for a living. Something about property management, he told us. The man did well, financially. Himself. There was no doubt there. Within that first year, he was paying all of the household bills taking my mom on fancy vacations, 
and even putting some money aside for my college fund. Ryan never went into details about his job, and his trip started lasting longer and longer. First, it was a few days here and there, then weeks, Dang. escalating until he disappeared for nearly a month at the start of my senior uh -huh. year of high school. My mom nailed a smile to her face, but I could tell Let's she- Let's see if she's still head over heels for him now. He was devastated and afraid. I decided to confront Ryan when he finally returned late one night. Mom was already asleep and didn't wake up. Why do it always gotta be the kid that's confronting this grown man? She should be doing it. When he pulled into the garage, I waited half an hour for him to get settled, then walked downstairs. Ryan was sitting at the kitchen table eating leftovers when I sat down. Hey kiddo, he said smiling. I'm gonna go in with Lash Paradise on this side and the Lux brand on this one. Starting with Lash Paradise, the volume. The smile dissolved when I asked him where he'd been and then told him I didn't think it was right that he was treating my mom that way, keeping her in the dark. Go to bed, Ryan said, wow, his dead. face Go cold and flat again. It felt like the temperature in the room dropped. To my shame, I scurried away, unable to keep eye contact with those dark, dead eyes of his. But a resolution formed in my mind that night. A promise to myself. Too. I'd at least check the shed to see what my stepdad was storing. I ordered a lock picking kit. Can you believe you can just buy that from Amazon? Then I waited an agonizing week for Ryan and my mom to head out for the day. There were three padlocks on the door. I got through them all in under two minutes. It was a big shed, but cramped. I pushed the door open and saw only shadows from the sunlight behind me. I fumbled around on the wall for a light switch, not even sure if oh the shed God, was wired for electricity. I don't even want to see what's in Apparently, it. it was. I flipped the switch and took a step back. The shed was packed with bone. Bones. Are they human bones? Are they human bones? There were boxes full of ribs and femurs, and collarbones, spines dangled from the rafters, and a full human skeleton was stapled to the back uh -oh. wall. I saw knives, big blades that curved back and forth like a snake's tail. A pair of black robes hung on a mannequin in the corner. I was so stunned by the contents of the shed, I barely registered the blinking red light over the door until I thought about it later. It was an alarm system. I was sitting at the kitchen table trying to decide my next move when Ryan's car pulled into the garage. The obvious thing to do was to call the police, but I was terrified that my mom somehow might get in trouble as well. I relocked the shed and figured I had time to talk to her, to warn her about Ryan. Then we could choose what to do together. We've been safe with you really think she will believe him, though? Him for more than a year or so. What was another day? By the time Ryan pulled his car into the garage, though, my mom was already dead. What? I went out into the garage to meet them and saw her dead, wide-eyed corpse sitting in the passenger seat. Ryan was watching me. With he killed her mom? I mean, he killed his mom? The, the blank face, oh, his shirt running. stained with my mom's blood, a curvy knife in his hand. I realized he knew I broke into the shed. I wanted to scream, weep for my mom. But when he opened the car door, my legs took over and ran into the house. Ryan had its secrets, and so did I. So did my mom. I knew that she had a small gun stashed away deep in the back of her closet. She bought it after dad died and before she met Ryan. I heard him crashing through the house behind me, calling my name. I made it to the gun just as he ran through the bedroom door. I fired until the clip was empty and Ryan was sliding down the hallway wall. Six okay. bullets in his stomach and chest. The police arrived quickly. After searching the shed, I found out the truth. Ryan wasn't just a killer. He had a hidden life. 
Several lives, actually. Several families. Hidden life? Were you about to say several families? Families. Some knew his secrets. Others, like Mom, were meant for sacrifice. Ryan had his own little cult, complete with followers. Oh, they were the ones calling him late at night and sending him those packages full of... And that's why people were staring at him like that. That's crazy. Bones. Trophies for his collection. Well, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. And I'm out.